In MathCAD, you can graph functions and matrices in XY plots. Let's start off by creating a function. I'll click on my worksheet, let's call it f of x, and then I'll use the definition operator. If you go to the operators dropdown, it is this one over here, which is also the colon key as the keyboard shortcut. And this is going to be equal to five plus 0.5x plus 2.5 times sine of x. Okay, that's good. Now to plot this, I will go to the plots tab. And then here we have insert plot. And from the drop down list, the first choice is the XY plot. The keyboard shortcut is control and the number two. I will click on the screen. And there you can see our XY plot. First, we will fill in the Y axis. And I could just put F of X. I'm gonna use a different variable just to be different. Let's call this F of W. And then let's click in the placeholder for the X axis. I will also put W and then click outside. Even though W is not defined, it uses a default range of minus 10 to plus 10 in order to graph this function. Now let's resize the XY plot. If you click on it, we have different drag handles that we can grab in order to make it shorter or taller or wider or narrower. I'm happy with this. Let me click outside in order to deselect. Let's say that we wanted to use a specified range instead of the default range of minus 10 to plus 10. We can create a range variable to do that. And I'll create my range variable, I'll, I'll call it R, and then I'll use the definition operator. This time I will use the keyboard shortcut of the colon key. And then to create our range variable, well, you can do that from the math tab. If you go to the operators group down near the bottom, here we have our range variable. You can also do the range variable where you specify a step. Uh, let's use that one. And I'll use from negative 25. And then for my step, I will do negative 24.95. In other words, I'll have it evaluated at a step of 0 0.05. And then let's go up to a value of 25. And I'll click outside. Now let's change our graph. Let's change from this F of a made up variable called W, let's change this to F of R, and then click in the placeholder for the X axis. You'll notice right now we are getting an error. Hey, once we change that to R and then click outside, we are fine and it is going from the range that we specified. But you can also change it to go between different ranges right in the XY plot. Even though the range variable is defined from minus 25 to 25, well, we can click on our different numbers and I can change this to say 20 and the graph updates. Let's change the lower limit to minus 20 and then click over here. It's also going at a step of four. Let's say I wanted to change the step. Well, let's change this from minus 16 to minus 10 and then click outside. And so if you click in the very next interval or next number to the right of your left limit, that's where you can change the interval on that axis. If we want to change the interval on the Y axis, well, you would change the next to bottom number. It's not the number over zero, which you might think, but it's this one over here. So for example, if I change this from negative 7.5 to negative five, and then click outside, Oh, we end up with a weird range over here. Let's change this one as well. Let's change this to negative 10. The lower limit automatically updated, but now we have a good range that we want. For the next thing that will change on this one, let's change some of the formatting. I will click on my XY plot once again, and then go to the plots tab. Here we have our trace color dropdown. And let's say instead of that blue color, I want to use a red color. Well, I will go ahead and click on that. And we can also change the trace thickness from the default weight 
and select a thicker weight that we want. Okay, so that's good for this first trace. You can actually have multiple traces on the same XY plot. You can have up to 16 on the same plot. So let's create a, another function. This one will be very close to the first one, g of x. And once again, I will use the definition operator, which is the keyboard shortcut of the colon key. Let's just do 5 plus 0.5x and click outside. Now I will select the plot that I made before. And then in the ribbon here, we have the add trace command, which is the same as shift and enter. So I will click on that. Oops, I accidentally had the uh, wrong one selected. Let's hit the undo button. Let me click over here for the Y axis. I wanna add a Y axis trace. And let's do G as a function of R and then click outside. Now our second plot is added, but it's red as well. I don't like that. So I will click next to that G of R so that it is selected in the Y axis. Let's go to the trace color. And I decide that I don't like any of the different default colors that are in here. I can click on more colors and then we can say, yeah, I want something that's blue. And here you can see the RGB. And I decide that I want it to be blue, blue. I want it to be a blue of 255 and zero for everything else. So I can adjust the numbers. You can also type them in over here. I will click the OK button and it changes that one as well. If I want to change the line style, I will go to the line style dropdown. And you have a bunch of different choices like dots and dashes and combinations of dots and dashes. Let's just use a bunch of dots for this one. So I like that formatting of my second plot that I've made in my XY plot. Let's take a look at some of the other different options that you have. First, I will select the plot over here. If you go to the plot background dropdown list, right now it's using paper color. You can also change it to transparent. And let, then let me deselect. I like this one. It looks like I actually wrote this directly on my worksheet. But let's select it once more. Another option that you have is a white background, which gives it a bright contrast with the original. Or you can go back to the default setting, which is the paper color. And yeah, that's the default. You might like it, you might not. Uh, let's change this to what I like, which is the transparent option. For the next one, we can turn the display of the tick marks on or off. So if I click on the graph so that I'm selecting the Y axis and then go to the tick marks, this will turn off the tick marks on the Y axis. If I select the placeholder for the X axis, I can turn those tick marks off. If you wanna turn them back on, hey, just select the appropriate placeholder and choose tick marks and then choose the other one and choose tick marks. Oops, am I turning them on or off? I think I'm hitting the wrong thing. You also have the ability to toggle the display of tick mark values on or off. Let's go to the Y axis values. Here you have the tick mark values on or off there as well. And let me leave the tick marks off for the Y axis. And one other thing to show for this one, sometimes you don't want to see the actual expressions themselves. You just want to see the graph. So you can turn off the display of the axis expressions entirely. And there we just have our graph. At the beginning, I mentioned that you can use XY plots for both functions and for data. Let's take a look at an example of creating some data. So I'm going to start off by generating some random numbers in order to create a matrix. Let me start off by using a range variable. I'll have I, and then I'll use the keyboard shortcut of the colon key for the definition operator. And let's just have this go from zero. Then I'll hit the period key a couple times on the keyboard to have it change to a range variable and have it go from zero to 100. And then let me define the first column in my vector or my matrix rather and I will call it data. 
And then I can go to the matrices and tables tab. And then for the vector and matrix operators, this third one over here is the matrix index operator, which is the same thing as the left bracket. Let me click on this and I'm going to define my element I, which is the range variable, comma zero, which is the first column of data. This is going to be equal to, and just to be different, I'll go back to the math tab and operators and use my definition operator. This is going to be equal to I. So my first column is just going to be the numbers from zero to 100. And then for the second column in my matrix, let's make data. And this time I will use the left bracket uh, on the keyboard as my keyboard shortcut. And this will be the I element comma one, first column. Let's have this be equal to a random number. Actually, let's have this equal to 40 plus a random number between zero and 40. RND is the random number function, and the number that you pass to the random number function is the upper limit for random numbers that you want to generate. And if we want to see what this data looks like, well, I can type in data equals, and here you can see that I have a matrix of numbers. That was just a way of getting some random numbers that I can plot. So let me click down near the bottom of the worksheet to go to a new sheet. And then I'll click where I want my X, Y plot to go. Let's go to plots, insert plot, X, Y plot once again. And this time on the Y axis, I will put data and I want to extract the column with the index number one. Just be aware that in MathCAD, the origin is by default set to zero. So the first column is actually the zero column. The second column is the one column. But anyhow, to get to my column operator, I can go to the matrices tables tab and vector matrix operators. It's this icon, which is the keyboard shortcut, control shift C. And let's use the first column there. Then I will click in the other placeholder. Let's type in data. And once again, I will use the same operator for getting a matrix column. Let's extract column zero. And then I will click and we get our numbers updated. And so let's clean this up a little bit. Let's change the limits just so that's a little wider over here. Let's use a value of 30 at the bottom and 90 up at the top. And it adjusts. While we're at it, let's make this a little bit wider. Let me go to my plots tab and turn off my axis expressions. And I want to change the interval. Let's change the interval such that we'll get it going every 10. There we go. That is good. And I'm happy with the X axis, so I won't do any formatting on that. So that's how we can plot different data points. Now let's take a look at adding some additional entities here. Let me make it a little wider while we're at it. Let's add in some horizontal markers. So with the plot selected, if I choose to add a horizontal marker, here we get a little placeholder where we can type in what we want for the location of our marker. And let's add in another one. I will select the XY plot, add a horizontal marker. And maybe I want to see the values that are between 50 and 70. So I've got that with my different, with my horizontal markers. Let me select this, just to make it a little brighter on the screen. Let me change my trace color to the red color. Now it's nice and vibrant. And there are a couple ways that you can change the display of your plot. With the plot selected, I can go to the change type dropdown list and we can take a look at, say, a stem trace. And there we have it as vertical lines with a little circle up at the top. Or we can take a look at a column trace. And I like that one. And so that's how we can make our XY plot. And by the way, since I used 
a random number generator, I can go to the calculation tab and then hit calculate and see how my data updates. So there you have it. That is part one of this exploration of XY plots in MathCAD.